If you could create any world that you wanted to, what would it look like? What colors would you use? What would the rules of the universe be? What people would be there with you? What kind of things would you be able to do in this world that you can't do in the real world? Ocean World is an amalgamation of a lot of different things. It's a show. It's connected to music. It's an ARG. It's a manga. It encompasses so many ranges of media that it's hard to kind of encompass into one definition. The way that fans can interact with Ocean World kind of also mimics the way that Ocean World works within its own canon. So before I go any further, what am I even talking about? Well, I'll start off from the basic beginning. Ocean World its main lore comes from a web series on the YouTube channel, Ocean World. There are currently 12 episodes in the first season, and branching out from that, there is the manga, which is going into what I believe to be the second season. And then on top of that, there are music videos with music made by one of the characters that fans could listen to independently of watching the show. And the creator of Ocean World also creates quests on different social media platforms like Discord and TikTok. So let's start off with how I think most people get introduced to Ocean World and that's through Yame. <laughs> Isolated without the context of Ocean World, Yame is a virtual singer and vocaloid that was created by Ocean and Deco. I'll go into who these people are. Yame has an Instagram, a Twitter, a shop, a website. She has 26 songs, three albums. She had a hit song on TikTok called Baby My Phone that has now over 9.5 million views. The kind of music that Deco writes in general and that encompasses Yame within is a genre called hyperpop and it kind of involves rap and trap beats and fast paced pop chords, that sort of thing. Accompanied by this music is Ocean's visuals, which are often bright, vibrant, very cartoonish, almost probably for some people a little too much to look at if we're being completely honest. but. If you're into this sort of art style, it's really mind-blowing. It looks like it's rendered within a CG software, like Blender or something like that. Each music video is its own masterpiece in and of itself, just with visuals alone. So if you want to kind of think about it in a more easier sense, it's kind of like how Gorillaz is made up of Damon Albarn and Jamie Hewitt, in that Damon makes the music and Hewitt makes the art and the lore of gorillas. It's kind of like Deco and Ocean, if that gives you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Deco is an American rapper and music producer, while Sean, also known as Ocean, is an American visual artist, musician, and the creator of Ocean World. Yame is really solidifying herself as a hyper pop idol going alongside p big people in the genre, such as Pinky, Black Winter Wells, and 8485. And if you're not familiar with this genre, just take away that these are pretty well-known names within the scene, and I think they're even all kind of friends with each other at this point. Uh, on the music side of things, it's pretty much that simple. She just comes out with songs that are pretty catchy, and you can totally be a fan of her without understanding the lore. But the most interesting part about this whole thing is whereas other vocaloids like from the ones from Krypton like Hatsune Miku and those vocaloids their lore is more fan base centered fans can make up whatever lore they want and that's kind of the appeal of those vocaloids whereas Yame has a canon universe and it goes pretty deep once you start digging down the rabbit hole. I did end up messaging Ocean on Instagram and was able to ask him a few questions. So when I asked him what his artistic inspiration was, he listed a lot of anime. And I've also heard that one of his big artistic inspirations is Takashi Murakami, who, if you're into hip hop at all, you've probably at the very least heard Murakami's name. He got popularized by Kanye West's music video 
You've probably seen this art before. This flower is really popular from him. He even coined his own term for an art style called super flat, which is a postmodern art movement where the outside looks very appealing and bright and fun and happy. But the deeper that you dig into the meanings of his art, the more it reflects his past about growing up in a post-World War II Japan. And it looks into feelings of hopelessness and despair and feelings after surviving a violent event. It's important to note that this is one of Ocean's inspirations, seeing as one, visually, we can totally see the similarities in color palette and art style and influence, but also that I think there's also that importance that on the outside, Ocean's art looks very bright and vibrant, but when you dig deeper, there's more to it than just that. Okay, if we got through the simpler stuff, buckle in because we're about to dive into the realm of Ocean World. I want to take us through each episode of Ocean World and just give a brief synopsis of what is presented. I think this is the best way to start collecting the lore and terminology that is used within the universe. In the pilot episode, we are introduced to one of the main characters, who I think his name is pronounced Labega, but he goes by L, so that's just what I'll be referring to him as. We see him in sort of like a detention setting within a world that, while colorful and vibrant, he describes as people being bogged down by addictions and hopelessness and depression. So see that inside of him there's this inner battle, like he's fighting with his own demons. He says that he's always lived in this place called Daedric City, and the other half of the time he lives in Ocean World, where he is basically the creator or god. This first pilot episode is laying down the groundwork for the idea that within this universe, there are multiple realms. Let me explain. Daedric City is a realm that is created by people where they are trapped by their own fears and anxieties versus a place like Ocean World that is created by L, where he gets to be himself and live outside of these physical restraints. We see that L gets to push out of Daedric City and he states that his mission is to help people find their own ocean worlds and to escape Daedric City. In the first episode, we're pretty much introduced to most of the main cast within the first minute. In this world that we see the main cast in, they're in their virtual reality avatar. So L and TV Head are the same person. We're introduced to Yame, who we're already familiar with, their friend Sad Boy, who we'll just see every now and again. He's sort of just a silly kind of comedic character and Kami, who is a god of manipulation. It's just kind of all of them getting together and having fun in this VR world. In the second episode, we see that L has been told he has mastered all of the elements of the physical realm. His teacher, or whoever this character is, they haven't popped up yet, so I don't know their name or really who they are, but invites L to go to Ocean World, where he tells him it's made of pure chaos, rather than the organic laws that is controlled by the physical realm. So we're familiar that L is kind of has these like magic powers of some sort. Don't think too deeply about it. In episode three, we get to meet the character of Choice, who is friends and mentor of L. They have a conversation about the nature of Choice and about how L is able to control his own circumstances based on what he chooses. He chooses to be up on the mountain with choice. He chooses whether or not he's hungry, etc, etc. This is kind of the introduction more into getting to see Ocean, the creator's kind of own self-philosophy uh, shining through the show. And we'll see that a lot more as we go on. Episode 4, we are introduced to a new realm called the Null, which is kind of, from what I can tell, sort of a limbo space. And it is controlled by the space god. We see Yame, 
enter the Null, where the space god confronts her and tells her that he's taking away her powers because she's misusing them, going in between realms too much, and she's not doing what he asked her to do with those powers. The episode ends with Yame waking up on the transit, going to Daedric City. In episode 5, we are introduced to this new realm called the Endless Dimension. So I'm going to pause really quick, just summarize the realms that we've been to so far so you don't get confused. We have Daedric City, which is the place of fears and everything. We have Ocean World, which is like El's ideal world that he creates and controls. We have the Null, which is kind of like a limbo space in between everything. And now we have the Endless Realm, which is basically a realm where all of humans new ideas kind of go to manifest and that's all you really have to understand about it right now we're also introduced to this concept of aikus which to be honest i can't really give you a good definition but all i know about them is when l and his shadow kids capture an aiku it gives l more power that's all I understand about it currently. If you're confused, so am I. There's much more to learn about this concept. In episode 6, we see L using his powers to collect the power from the Aiku. And we see him use something like a memory spell in order to go into the memories that he has within his brain about his time with Yame. And when he tries to remember his time in Daedric City, Choice tells him that he needs more magic in order to go that deep within his brain. Episode 7, we see Yame living in Daedric City, playing a video game where her friend confronts her, saying that she needs to go to school, she's been playing video games all weekend, and that it's sort of a distraction. And she says it's from the voices, and her friend says, hey, you know, maybe listening to the voices is an important thing to do. And that's how the episode ends. Episode 8, Yame takes her friends out to a club called The Box. And when Yame looks like she's not having a good time, her friend slips a psychedelic drug inside of her drink. And Yame goes on this crazy acid-like trip. She starts to hear voices and see different worlds which we come to learn she's actually traveling through realms again and she takes this statue of what appears to be like a giant mystical chess piece when yame touches the statue we cut to l saying that he saw yame in the middle of his training where he's balancing rocks on his head for some episode reason. nine is a conversation where l asks choice why he enjoys staying in the endless realm so much Elle says that there are parts of this realm that are dangerous and that are scary. And Choice explains that he finds it all beautiful, the good and the bad. With too much good comes obsession, and with too much bad comes no love at all. So he kind of finds this endless realm of good and bad to be a state of true love. In episode 10, we see Yame back at school, where her friend asks her what kind of time she had at the club, and Yame says that she had an amazing time, to which she then starts hearing voices and her friend starts freaking out that she gave her too many drugs but yame goes back home and sees that chess piece that she had found while tripping and she realizes oh dang maybe this wasn't an acid trip maybe this was real when she touches the chess piece she is teleported back to the endless realm where Elle is waiting for her and tells her hey we've been friends for a long time Yame doesn't remember. In episode 11, Elle starts to tell Yame that she's been living in Daedric City, that it's a mind maze made by cyberspace wizards, and that she's not dead, but that she's stuck within her mind, and that the only way for her to get out is for Elle to give her back her memories. And he warns her that with this, Daedric City will try harder to kill her. Yame is sent back to Daedric City, where she is greeted by a dark, evil angel version of herself that encompasses all of her fears and tells her that it, they are the ruler of this domain. And when this evil version threatens Yame, she ends up killing her. Yame ends up appearing back into the Null, where she is greeted by not only the space god, but all different versions of herself. 
And what's interesting about all these different fractured fragments of herself is all these different yames, they've been theorized to represent different forms of music from the music videos. All of these different yame fragments have been shown within music videos. You've got Dark Angel Yami, which is Cyber Baby Angel. You've got this Pink Yame, which is the Requiem for My Flower music video. You have Pastel Yame, which actually hasn't appeared in a music video yet. There's the Bathing Suit Yame, which is from the music video Ice Cream. You've got Blue Yame, which is from Ice Baby. And this Sleepy Yame, which is from Dreams. We are introduced to another realm within that last episode called The Void. This is where the space god threatened to bring her. Uh, it's kind of a mysterious, chaotic realm. Probably kind of like death, if you want to think about it like that. They all start fighting amongst each other about which one of them is the real Yame and what to do and this, this, that. And this original Yame that we've been following through the whole series says, Hey, why don't we all fuse together and defeat this evil Yame? To which they agree pretty uh, quickly. <laughs> to Yame's surprise and they go back to Daedric City where they fight this evil Yame and end up winning. The season ends with Yame explaining to Elle how she left Daedric City and it shows that they are now good friends. We have peeks into season two so far with this teaser trailer that Ocean put out but also through the manga series that he's been putting out on his website. There are currently five chapters. The first chapter just kind of summarizes the first season that we just went through. In the second chapter, we're introduced to a completely different realm with completely different characters. We don't know too much about this realm yet, but that it's called the Hyper Realm, and there's a city in it called Alteria Z, which is said to be the capital of entertainment. All we know from this chapter so far is that this character who lives here is named Ears, and he likes to stay up late, make races, um, takes cough medicine to be like zoned out. Uh, but he wants to join these hyper races that are happening for the first time in decades. And whoever wins gets the prize of this crystal that will grant you powers. It's kind of vague right now. This character ears kind of just wants to join to get girls and food and money. And then in the next three chapters, we get to see Yame and Sad Boy and that whole crew kind of just hanging out in the Endless Realm. Yame getting used to her powers and so forth. Sad Boy has the power to multiply and Choice says that Yame has the rare power of change. I don't know much about that yet because that was literally within the newest chapter that came out the day that I'm filming. So I'm just relaying to you what I read. The themes that are explored often within Ocean World are a lot of Buddhist-like themes, like believing in yourself, being comfortable with yourself, being okay with change, accepting the good and the bad in a balanced manner. And I think, if anything, there's a big emphasis from Ocean of just taking the time to think and taking the time to confront oneself about their fears, their anxieties, to dig deeper into things and to not be scared of that. And there's even deeper lore that goes into this, but I can't get into it within this video because in order to get to this lore, uh, you would join the Discord group where there are quests and riddles and puzzles to solve. And of course I solve them all within like the first day of joining. Duh. They were actually super fun, my fiance and I stayed up all night solving them and it's a lot of decoding and using ciphers. I hate ciphers but I was really interested in the lore and where it took me. If I wanted to get into the lore that is explored within these riddles I would have to give away the riddles and so far on the internet people haven't been doing that and at least within this video I want you guys, I want to encourage you guys to go and do it yourselves. I think one of Ocean's big tenets is to get people out and talking to each other and thinking and using their brains. So I'm going to respect that for now. I may make a future video where I explore it, but it's kind of like spoilers. If you, if you don't want the answers to the riddles, you don't have to watch it. But I kind of want to document it so that I can talk about the lore that's explored. 
Whew, okay, I think we've gone over most of the information that I can see here. So when I asked Ocean what we can be anticipating about the future of Ocean World, he basically just told me what I already expected. More manga, more shows, more music. And there's actually supposed to be a video game coming out this year. So that would be pretty cool. If you want to check all this out, of course, go and check out Ocean World's YouTube page. That's where the show is. That's where the music is. I highly recommend checking it out. You can join the Discord server. You can follow Yame or Ocean or Deco, any of them, uh, on lots of different social medias like TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. So with that being said, I will sign off today and I will say thank you for watching.